So I'm Noah Rosenberg, uh, founder, CEO, and editor-in-chief of Narratively, and a former uh, alum of the Townit Center, uh, the entrepreneurial program here. And I'm here with uh, Shane Smith, co-founder and CEO of Vice Media. So Shane, uh, thanks for coming. Great, great remarks tonight. Thanks for having me. Uh, obviously, you've, you've built a massive following amongst uh, you know what is a pretty lucrative market for advertisers. You know the young global market. Um, you know beyond that aspect of the equation, why is the youth perspective so important and important device? I think that the baby boomers have been running media since the '60s um, because they were the largest spending cohort. Um, and so media has sort of followed them and continues to do so. So Gen Y is becoming general media. And so as Gen Y is becoming general media, they're looking for their voice. And kind of by default, uh, and by the way, it's a great time to start a company, um, because if you look at Fox or MSNBC or uh, Time Warner, all of the traditional news media, or media mm -hmm. for that matter, are sort of falling off with Gen Y. Why? Because they're baby boomer companies and they are affiliated with that baby boomer sure. voice. So Gen Y looking for a, a sort of more, you know, a voice that speaks to them and resonates with them are looking around saying, well, who can we look at? Who can, who, you know, is it, is it Vice or is it Buzz uh, Feed or is it, uh, um, I don't know who, uh, you know, uh, Vox or something. Mm -hmm. People love to love Vice and they love to hate Vice. Sure. Uh, you know, you mentioned David Carr and he kind of went from the dark side to the, to the light. What, um, you know, what are the biggest mis misconceptions that you maybe often hear about your brand? Well, that's a, that's a good question. I think when we first started, we said we either want people to love us or hate us, but we just don't want people to be like, meh, you know, gray, sort <laughs> of fine. So we've always been loved and hated, and I think there's this vice, the golden era, uh, when we were the hipster's Bible and the coolest thing on earth. Well, I was actually there, you know, and it wasn't necessarily that great. It was okay. Uh, it was easier to be saucy back then, you know. Um, I think as we grow, it's funny because now what we found is that people who like news want us to only do news. People who like music want us to only do music. People who like food want us to only do food. I think the biggest thing going forward is you know, as we grow and as our audience grows with us to sort of keep that verticalization happening mm. because vice is the omnibus, the days of vice being the omnibus, I think are very close to being over. That's interesting. So you're saying that there isn't as much crossover between the verticals as, as you might expect. Correct. People are coming in yeah. and, and this is their, these are their people. Correct. So when we first started, you would have vice music and vice yep. food and vice everything, you know, and everybody went, oh, cool. And it was, yep. it was, yep. it was this everything in one thing. And now Munchies is its own brand, and Noisy exactly. is its own brand, and Creators is its own brand, Vice News is its own brand. And so you see the people, particularly in news, which is growing the fastest, they don't care about fashion or food or any of the others, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Whereas Vice came up as a lifestyle brand, now we're being branded as not a lifestyle brand. Yeah. So that's, that's an interesting transition, and I think for us it's exciting because We've been doing that for 20 years and now we're doing something new and it's growing fast and it's fun. One more question for you. So you guys are, are growing rapidly. Uh, obviously every new, new vertical you launch, every new infusion of capital, there's more and more things you can do, which, which uh, you know, makes me a little jealous. You know, I wish I had some access to that stuff to continue growing uh, the right yeah, way. You're but it's a uh, full head of hair. <laughs> so exactly. Straight off. Um, but how do you, obviously, you, you know, the cool thing about you guys is that you've maintained this this aesthetic, the sensibility, the style throughout. You know whether you're you're doing munchies or you know creators project. Mm -hmm. What's the key? What's the trick to maintaining that independence as you guys grow to owning your TV network to you know doing your own you know cable provider down the line, whatever it is you guys do in, in five, ten, fifteen years. Yeah, that's a good question. The 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 trick to maintaining independence is to stay independent, which sounds easy, except what it means is saying no to a lot of money at various times. So you're gonna find this out running your own company. Two years from now, someone will offer you money and you'll say either yes or no. If you say yes, was it enough? If you say no, you know, shit, you know, now you're still living that life of the entrepreneur. And, you know, we've said no to $10 million and then 20 and then 30 and mm. then 40 and now 2 billion and 3 billion and 4 billion. And that's not easy to do because at a certain point you're like, well, I could be a billionaire if I said yes, but, you know, 
as I got older, I realized that money didn't really move me. That's not my biggest sort of engine. Mm. Um, but you have to say no to money, which everyone can say, oh, I'll, I would say no, I would say, <laughs> well, try doing it when you're, you can't pay your mortgage and, you know, someone's offering you hundreds of millions of dollars. But, it, you know, I think that maintaining independence, you have to really want to do it. And it's one thing to say, oh, when I get big, I'll maintain my independence. It's another thing to say, I well, do it. Yeah. you know, here's hundreds of millions of dollars. No, I'm not going to take it. Because people don't understand, like, you mean worth a lot of money, but try buying a cup of coffee with it. You only, <laughs> it only becomes money when yeah, you sell. Yeah, of course. Right. Of course. And so I think that's a big misconception about vice is that, you know, we're worth all this money and I personally am worth all this money. But in actual fact, you don't actually get the money mm. until you sell. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Slash, Thank congrats. You. Thank Thanks. you. Wow.